uh, cyber professionals we have today, uh, Frida Clanton and also uh, Peter Benson from, uh, from Camp Smith, the big white building on the hill, uh, <laughs> Indo-PACOM. <laughs> and they're cyber experts. And we're going to talk to them about what that means. I'm so excited to talk to you, you know, because technology is our middle name. Welcome to the show, Peter. Frida, nice to see you. Thanks nice to be us. here. Thank you. So let's start with you, Peter. Um, you're active duty, but you've had a lot of training in cyber. Can you talk about it? I mean, to the extent you can talk about it. For sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I've been in the Navy for, for about 20 years now. Um, gone training pretty much, um, you know, every tour we go to just on how, how to be better better professionals in the cyberspace and how to work with uh, work with the computers and work really in the, you know, in the ether, uh, because and that's where everything's going. That's where uh, all of our technology is now. We're all connected. So, you know, so we're going to talk about cybersecurity month and just how important that is I think, you know, training for my whole career, really. And I think Priya can will be able to say the same. But, uh, wow. You know, so 20 years ago, it wasn't nearly as much of a, an issue as it is today. No, you know, 20 years ago, uh, we had a single computer in our, in our office that we all shared. And, uh, you know, password sharing was a, was a, is a, wasn't a thing. And just, we have come a long way in just a couple short decades. I want to talk about that. So, Frida, you're, you're a retired civilian uh, member of Indopaycom. Am I right? Did I get that right? You're retired military, but you're a civilian now. Does that yeah. make you senior to Peter? <laughs> uh, well, we're all teammates. We'd like to think of ourselves as teammates. But yes, I am retired Navy. And uh, as upon my retirement, I started working civil service because, as you know, cyber, and back when I started, it wasn't even called cyber. I think it was, we just worked IT or information technology. But it's ever evolving, and it does take you know, the continuity and the learning and the training that you were referring that Peter had. And so instead of just staying retired, I wanted to continue to expand on my knowledge and serving the, for my country. So government civilian was the route for me. It's great. It's, you know, it's all the more important. I was telling you before the show that we had a discussion about China last hour. It was, it was you know, um, not, not particularly uh, um, strategic, but uh, one of the points that came up was, uh, if uh, China goes after Taiwan, and they say they will, uh, they'll probably do cyber first, soften it up. And um, likewise, uh, look what Putin did in Ukraine. He used cyber to soften Ukraine up, and then, and then you know, made a made hamburger out of it. <laughs> well, I would say that cyber is on everyone's radar, and the wars are probably going to move from a kinetic uh, to cyber and I think everyone's trying to leverage it for good things as well as not so good things. So that's why we're here to kind of push cybersecurity awareness so that we can keep our nation safe. Well, you talk about awareness. Everybody talks about awareness. Uh, Peter, I mean, how much is it uh, awareness and how much is it technology where you actually have a machine that, um, you know, identifies cyber attacks and deals with them? University had a program recently which I thought was very interesting about intrusions, intrusions into the academic world. And of course, there are people intrusions, you know, there's phishing and what have you, all kinds of things like that. But at the end of the day, they were getting into the data. They were getting into the data by way of cyber attacks. And so how much of it is um, people and how much of it is technology? Yeah, so I mean, I, I think it's... Uh... It's it's both obviously, but I think you know we really have to focus on that training the individuals. So, uh, you know, roughly you could say about ninety percent of our cyber attacks all kind of kind of you can trace them back to origination with a person, right? It's a, it's a man or a woman on a mouse clicking a link or or doing something in the cyberspace, that it, you know, basically providing access to someone. Uh, so it's it's incredibly important that we educate people, uh, educate the all the workforces. Frida, let's talk to you. Okay. Um, you know, the, the, thing, the thing about it is uh, that um, we have two communities here. One, we have the, you know, maybe three. 
Um, we have, the, we, we, you know, the ordinary uh, Joe Dokes people like me, uh, you know, who worry about ransomware to, to individually or to the company. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then we have business people who could be very large businesses like Sony, for example, getting hacked by North Korea, that sort of thing. Um, big business has big effect when you hack somebody that's big like that. And then we have government, and especially the military. Um, so what are, which of those um, communities are you involved in? So we are actually, as we stated, we work for the Department of Defense. But I would argue um, cyber being leveraged for all types of things, if it be in Hollywood, if it be our infrastructure, if it be the government. Um, you know, to, to deny and disrupt is a goal of every adversary using any type of technology or any means that they can. And I guess part of what we are really here to talk about is how a lot of these, avail uh, these compromises or these threats, malware, ransomware, phishing, whatever it may be, a lot of it is attributed to users being uninformed, business and independent users alike uninformed on the ways that they can protect themselves. You know, I would argue, Jay, that good cyber hygiene could actually stop a lot of this activity. And so the purpose of Cybersecurity Month is to make people cyber aware. If you're not clicking on things that you don't recognize, and a lot of these attacks that you mentioned, um, if you look at the reporting, a lot of it happened in places that, um, to Pete's point, didn't have password security, didn't have, um, updated versions of software, didn't do the basic rudimentary cyber hygiene things to keep themselves safe. So regardless of the industry, if it be uh, in academia, uh, in the marketplace, or even the DOD, the overarching message and the way ahead and the way to protect ourselves is to be cyber aware and to do the due diligence to actually make sure that we're doing practices, they call them best practices in our world, to protect our networks. That would take us a very long way. Mm. The point of view of um, of um, you know phishing and being mm, vulnerable and and being silly and, and not practicing hygiene that's one thing. But you know what about what about software that'll spot this? What about hardware that you know sort of closes down ports automatically? Um, what about ways to protect your network that do not involve people? that only involve hardware and software that work automatically. Do we have that? Does anybody have that? Well, I would say to that, the, you know, the big thing on that is being smart with it. So um, recognizing there's, there is software out there that you can get, there's, there's free software that you can get out there. Microsoft uh, has a good program that's completely free. You can put it on your computer to help protect you from uh, ransomware attacks, malware attacks, um, those types of sorts of things. So, yeah, there's absolutely pieces of uh, software out there you can go and grab yourself. There's also websites you can go to. So CISA.org is a great website to go to. That one will provide you information on ransomware attacks and really how to avoid uh, putting yourself in a susceptible position. But I think the, the big piece of this too is that with COVID, you know, for the past two years, we have, you know, the, the workforce working from home has you know, increased exponentially. So there's so many more people on these devices. That they really have to be, you know, be protected, protect themselves and be smart again. Yeah, yeah, it's true. And uh, the world has changed in the past year and a half, almost two years now. Um, let me, but let me ask you, Frida, with, you know, with Zoom, when Zoom first got popular and everybody was on Zoom, and trust me, we are on Zoom all the time, and we're talking to the whole world. We have, you know, correspondence in every continent. Um, but query, um, Zoom said they added security patches on their program um, over the past year, about a year ago. They made a big thing about that because WebEx seemed to be ahead of them and maybe Skype was ahead of them in terms of security. So they mm, put some resources into being more secure. But it strikes me, actually, when what Peter says that if we are all talking to each other, if our meetings, including meetings that you know would be somewhat sensitive, that are sensitive, uh, are on Zoom, how safe is that? How safe are these virtual programs? Or should we be concerned about them too? 
Yeah, I have to tell you, I'm not aware of any sensitive meetings that are happening on Zoom, but unless you're telling family secrets uh, and talking to your family, but I would say just to kind of roll back your previous comment about the things that automatically provide cybersecurity for us, I would argue behind every application and every system and every piece of equipment that you think could protect you, that there's a person correlated and connected to it. And that person must configure it properly and stay abreast of all the vendor updates and changes. Zoom is not exempt from that. Zoom has built-in security. Uh, just like for this meeting, you sent us a link. It could have been forwarded to someone else. And if the link is not associated with a password and things like that. So security is as much as you put on it or as much as you don't. Those are the things that make us vulnerable. And just to kind of reiterate, the reason that we're here is to really push user behavior. There are so many things that can be mitigated uh, and stopped just by educating users. Yeah, you are the real Frida Clanton, right? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it strikes me from talking to you, Peter, that um, you guys are on the defense. Uh, you're playing defensive ball here. You're trying to protect people and have them protect themselves at every level, including civilian, military, whoever you talk to, um, so that they don't get hacked and ripped off and ransomed and the like. But somewhere in the bowels of government, we all walk around thinking this. There's another team. Maybe it's not your team. It's some other team. It's in the basement somewhere that, that go the reverse way, that, that are playing offensive. Now, you don't have to say anything. Just nod your head left or right. <laughs> uh, I can tell you. I assume it's not defensive. all defensive. Am I right? Well, you can't play a game correctly if you don't have an offense and a defense. So we know just from the laws of how, how things go. But I will tell you, to your point, and I hate to jump in, our goal is to definitely to teach and to help, number one, to defend our nation. And that does not mean that there aren't other games being played, but specifically for us, defense, and that comes from our government, DOD, the marketplace and all. And that's why we're really here to just try to get this awareness. You brought up universities. And so the threat to leveraging the technology exchanges, the technology advances, if we don't safeguard just our university where they're researching and they're creating new things. So K through 12, our children, you know? So we want to come and just talk about how to be cyber smart across all industries, all people. And, and we believe, because we do play on the defense, that there are ways to defend your network. Um, and to Pete's point, if you're going from work to home using the same device, um, there's the website he provided, CISA, how to protect your organization. Uh, there's, there's risk with that if you're not safeguarding your home computer and you're doing work at home. So we just, we believe you can. Oh, I do too. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, I think it's an ongoing issue and we have to pay more attention to it, not less. But at the same time, Peter, I, 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 I have the impression that the bad guys out there, I want to call them the black hats or, or, or the national, you know, the, the, the nation players, you know, who get involved directly or indirect in, in hacking us, um, and, you know, disrupting us, getting our data, whatever it may be. Um, they're not static here. They're working day and night um, to do better. They're working day and night to have the ability to disrupt us and have the ability to get our data. So, you know, hygiene today uh, may be arguably good enough today, but what about tomorrow? This is all a moving target, isn't it? Yeah. No, for sure. I, mean, I think we've already talked about a little bit how just in two decades, how much stuff has changed. Um, the adversary is always evolving. Uh, and with that, I mean, we're always evolving. We're always trying to be better and try to defend our networks better. Uh, but there's going to come a time where there's guys like me, there's girls like Frida, we're going to, uh, you know, we're going to move on and, you know, we're not going to understand the technology of the distant future. And we need, to, that's where we need those the kids to really embrace cybersecurity, understand it, and then get excited by it. I think that's the big part of it. You know, get excited that it's not just sitting behind a 
computer all day, 12 hours a day, just to wipe it away. It, you're doing stuff for the better of the country, the better of the corporation that you're working for to really improve the process. You know, if we start we get those kids excited now in 10 years, they're going to be replacing us in that making the country and keeping up with those advances that you're talking about. Yeah, you hope the educational system will do it for them. And by the same token, Frida, we hope the educational system in terms of clean computer hygiene will do, do it for them. Because, you know, some kids listen, some kids are smart. I wouldn't give you percentages on this. I have the sense that you, you surround yourself with kids. I bet there are kids in your life. That's, that's my personal bet. Just, just sort of personality style kind of thing. Um, but it seems to me that it doesn't necessarily come easy. Kids, kids sometimes, especially in COVID, um, you know, school is a different experience. Learning is a different experience. Commitment to achievement, probably a different experience. So how do you deal with the possibility that these kids aren't getting it? That they care about the games, um, that they care about the fun things, maybe social media, you know, stroking their friends, what have you. But they don't care about protecting themselves, defending, you know, their data, defending the stability of their lives. How do you make them understand? What do you say to them? What's the forum for this? But you have to tell you, I, can't, I respectfully disagree. I've met doctors who talk about how the reason they wanted to become a physician is because of some medical trauma that happened in their life to a loved one or to themselves. When people grow up and find a profession, usually it's attributed to something. And we have so many things surrounding cyber. I mean, there's automobiles that have just smart homes, smart automobiles. There's sustainability things. I, ha I do have a daughter who's 17. And she, she wants to be an attorney, but I'm telling her- I was her just making a wild guess there. No, okay, so they keep you going, hopefully. <laughs> but I believe that our, our gamers, our current day gamers, is they become more versed about how things work and suffer a little, I don't wanna say tragedy, but they've been hacked. We have young people who their Instagram or their social media, or, and they see these things happen and it sparks something and they wanna know how to protect. I have a girlfriend who her daughter's in high school and I know that Mililani has a cybersecurity club. I think our schools are starting to get it. Um, many have cyber clubs and it's not just coding, it's not just math. Uh, they're getting in at all levels. And I think it's up to people like me in uniform uh, that definitely, I mean, it's a great career in the military, but it's up to us to not make it so taboo or, or a mystery but really it's a part of everyone's everyday life. So how do we convince a kid to protect their image or their uh, social media or in the future, maybe their money through Bitcoin? I don't know where it's going, but I do know that through tragedy or interest, our young people are becoming cyber aware because things are happening and they wanna know how do I prevent this? Mm. So, um, you know, Peter, it strikes me that if I was, good, if I was considering the Navy, I'd really like to have a career like you had, because um, it makes me valuable not only in the Navy for the defense of the country, it makes me valuable for the defense of, of the, the business end of the country uh, because of what I learned in the Navy. Um, and I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily want to be a, a, a trooper in a war theater, uh, but I would want to learn everything the government can teach me about this, because I can't think of a place, honestly, I mean, even, even with the gamers, I can't think of a place that's a better place to learn about this than the military itself. You agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, if I could go, we could go all day about the benefits of, uh, you know, just general military, joining the military and what it's, what it's done for me in my life, and how it's grown me as a man. Um, but this, the cyber realm is, you know, I've learned so much there. It's definitely put me in a great place to, for when I get out of the service. Um, but I also just say, you know, the military as a whole, just learning, you know, putting these guys out for it, they're, they're going to develop skills. It doesn't matter if you're in cyber, if you're, you know, the ground troop guy like you were talking about, or if you're on a ship or you're an aircraft, you know, you're going to learn skill sets, but you're not going to learn anywhere else in the world. So between leadership and just camaraderie and all that. And can't, can't talk enough about the military and what it's done. Well, that's pretty attractive, actually, as a, yeah. a career and a career leading to another one. You know the kind of career that Frida has had. 
that kind of career. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. He's my friend. <laughs> So, Frida, I want to ask you, you know, from some substantive advice on this. You know, we talk about hygiene, okay? It's, uh, the, but, they, you know, can we drill down a little bit? Um, so, first of all, I don't give my best work to anybody. This is great commercial um, where this kid is at his computer and he turns to his mother and he says, Mom, what was the password on our IRA account again? And, <laughs> and somebody is asking him this, you know, fishing with him. Um, and he's fishing with her, but so it's not just that it's, um, it's much more than that. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's more than being smart and who you deal with. I mean, there's so much, you know, I, I get 500 emails a day, every day. And of those, I'm suspicious of a substantial percentage of them. And yes. not that I know any more than anyone else, but you have to learn to be suspicious. So what are the parameters of suspicion? Well, I will tell you that to your point, the first one, um, there's a common thing that occurs on Facebook where people go, there's a litany of questions and it says, have you ever done this, gone here? What was your favorite pet? What was your, you know, those are phishing. That is a form of phishing. It's very popular, uh, normally has about 15 have you ever's and, and, and it is being monitored and people use that. So it is not only that, Jay, but I will tell you that that is very commonplace. It's all over social media, and I cringe every time I see it. Um, well, why is it wrong for me to tell them about my pet? Well, we know the security questions. For those of us that have set up, uh, and even for kids, if they haven't set up a credit card account or an account somewhere asking your security questions, uh, what was your high school, where did you meet your spouse, which you know they may not be married, or what was your favorite pet, what was your pet's name? data lake. It's just creating data on data on data. And with the onset of artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, there's some really smart people out there that can create a profile on you and just track it for years or go back retrospectively from when you first set up your Facebook account and just glean and gather so much information. And so being cyber aware is being aware of that type of threat. Now, to your point about your email, you can send email. Uh, for the DOD aspect, we have requirements like it has to be encrypted or it'll identify if it's coming from a non-DOD source. So for us, the labeling is much clearer, but we still have to be very smart. One litany test that you can give for every email, do you know this person? Are you somewhat affiliated with them? Is it an official account and are they asking you things that normally you would not be asked? If you get an email from a bank and they're saying, hey, we need you to verify your, your credit card information, your birthday, and your account number, call the bank. Don't trust it. I would say hit delete because, yes, that is phishing. That is fake. That is not how banks operate. However, if you're concerned, what you can always do, don't click on any links or attachments because they're loaded with what we call malware. And it can really, it can traverse across your whole computer, lock it up, create ransomware. Uh, really real you inactive from that point on. So no clicking on links. If you open it, look at the point of contact and call. Is this really who they say they are? I would say delete it if it looks questionable. And some systems, depending on if it's your work or if it's your personal, you can report it. Even with Gmail, you can report spam. You can block it. Jay, you may need to block some of those 500 emails. I do. <laughs> I, I delete them. And, you know, I mean, in these difficult political times, so many of them are political emails asking me to send yeah. money, ask me to support this candidate or that candidate, take this position or that position. And I get two reactions. One is, are these all legitimate? Can they be so many of them all legitimate? Are they really going to put my money where they say they're going to put my money? Uh, or are they just going to take my money and get my credit card, what have you? I mean, it's just so mm, threatening, really, if you think about it. Uh, you and I take your point is I think the user has to see, has to imagine a cloud of personal information out there where there's one nefarious person or organization that's gathering everything from every source and making a profile on you about everything. And, and with that profile, they can do, you know, terrible things. And I think you have to see it that way. Maybe that sounds paranoid, but I think you have to see it that way. 
I don't think that's paranoid at all, Jay. I think and you know, we use the term in the military a lot, the puzzle pieces, right? So I, all those pieces of information, and they're just puzzle pieces. Eventually, someday, the bad guy is going to get enough puzzle pieces to get the whole picture, and uh, they can do some damage. And well, so, what, what happens, oh, Peter? I'm sorry. I'll go ahead for you. I just wanted to say, and to Pete's point, the bad guy doesn't have to necessarily be China. It's just people leveraging cyber bad hygiene uh, weaknesses. It's theft. So people used to go into stores, maybe gunpoint, and now it's a keyboard <laughs> to get robbed. I totally agree. Some, you know, American people living in this country, just playing. Um, and, uh, you know, and that includes people that are right on the line, too. It isn't necessarily nefarious. It's just ripoff. And there's a fine line between cyber attack and hacking and just ordinary cheating and fraud. It's all out there. <laughs> so, uh, Peter, let me ask you this. I mean, suppose you suppose something is acting funny on your computer, you know? I, I mean, Frida was saying, um, you know, better delete that if there's any sus suspicious aspect to it. Um, but what about, you know, a higher level of suspicion? Uh, what about, oh, this looks infected, or this was, this is doing things I didn't, I never saw before, blah, blah, blah. You know, and I come to the intellectual conclusion that there's something haunting my, <laughs> haunting my machine. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? do? You know, I take it down to Best Buy. Or do I throw it in the trash? Do I do I pour um, a kerosene on top and burn it? What do I do? Yeah, so I'd say the first thing is <clears throat> the worst thing you can do is throw it in the trash, right? Because so there's people who will go through trash cans. They will find that. They will find ways around that malware. <laughs> they will take everything on that. So yeah, two shades. <laughs> Don't throw your old laptops in the trash. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, I'd say there's um, you know, there's two ways to look at that. So if you're at work, obviously you're gonna follow the rules that your your IT department has set forth, and you know, follow them. I'm not that person, but um, isolating a box from a network is is one way to prevent that from if you if you're getting that suspicious activity, you need to prevent it from putting any more information out there into the world and, or taking more stuff on board your computer. Um, then the other one, it, it a professional. So if you, you know, if it is going down to Best Buy and talking to Geek Squad, you know, that could be one option. Um, the other option is, you know, talk to some peers, talk to friends. I, I just had some, one of my computers actually was acting up and I couldn't figure it out. I talked to a friend and he gave me some advice on that. Um, was it infected? Think, was it hacked? It, it was not hacked. No, I, unfortunately, I, uh, when I moved out to our, my new location, I, uh, Unplugged it straight from the power and it put it into a bit of a, bit of a loop of a boot loop. But anyways, that's a long story, a different different show. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, so that's what I'd say. You know, just if if it's if it's acting funny, uh, don't continue clicking emails. Don't do all that stuff. You need to stop what you're doing and, and step back from the situation. Yeah. And figure out what what your next step is. Whether that's remove it from the network, call your IT support people, or get some help outside especially if you don't understand what is, is that what you guys do you guys serve in that capacity for uh, uh, for indopaycom i mean is some some officer at indopaycom or listed whatever call you uh, and say look I, my machine is acting up uh, can you take a look at it I mean, is that part of your role to do that so that's not necessarily my role but we definitely have those people like any corporation you know we're a big building with lots of computers we have an entire team uh, dedicated to help us with our IT infrastructure. That's not necessarily my role. Got it. So, Frida, you know, it seems to me that this we started out with this notion. It's it's all the more threatening all the time, and it's external from nation states, but it's also internal from our own kids and wise guys who like to you know disrupt people. Uh, just for drill. It's, a, it's the same people who do bully on social network, you know, like, that kind of negativity. Um, and so, you know, the, the question is um, the system, which is an open system in the network, you know, internet was always intended to be. I, I suppose there might have been a moment back when, uh, when we could have built a, an internet that required you to identify yourself before you could do anything. But we're way past there now. <laughs> we can get around anything. Um, and it's getting more sophisticated, uh, you know, clearly. 
So your your office, your role, your function for the Navy uh, or for the military, you know, Indo-PACOM, um, has got to be more demanding all the time. It's got to be bigger. I mean, how do you see this evolving in terms of the defense of the military, the defense of the nation? I mean, if I, I, I see the two of you now, if I look at my screen two years from now, there'll be four of you. I know it. <laughs> I mean, same different people, of course, but, you know, two more of you. Um, and and um, I'm wondering how you see this all changing going forward. You must think about that. Huh? I do. And, and I will tell you that, first of all, I have the utmost confidence in our nation to get after the challenge. Um, part of that is top-notch military that gets top-notch training. And there's a lot of things that we do to protect citizens, the military does. And then it's government civilians like myself, um, some who have served in the military like myself and some who have not, who prioritize being the best at what they do. Um, I myself uh, take education seriously, uh, certifications, and you're right, we do need a bigger workforce, like anything that's new and evolving. I mean, I remember, not closely related, but when the only thing you could order for food delivery was a pizza, and now we have DoorDash and Grubhub, and we have competition in the market, and you can pretty much get anything, and they need a much more workforce. Well, I kind of equate that on a higher scale to what we're doing, and that's another reason, Jay, why we're here, and it's definitely to demystify what cybersecurity is, uh, to definitely address how we can be cyber smart, but also just to encourage, you know, we're available to come talk to schools, um, we want to partner with the community. Well, you are. Good, good. good. He is. Happy to hear that. <laughs> no, we Happy are. We, are. <laughs> we, we definitely want to encourage our young people to not only understand that it's a lucrative career, and you do well for yourself, um, it's, it's a lot of availability, but also it's rewarding and it's informative. And this is where the world's going. There will not be one aspect of our lives. I mean, they have refrigerators that have platform IT that can tell you what's in your refrigerator and order it to a store. I mean, there's not one aspect that won't require some knowledge of cyberspace and cyber uh, computing. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for the refrigerator that has sensors on it. And it says <laughs> I'm, I'm a little too big. Uh, and, I, and I really shouldn't be opening the door of the refrigerator. And it says something like, you know, Hal, I can't do that for you. <laughs> I need one to zap my hand. So yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can agree. But yeah. You know, you know, Peter, about... one of the things that happened this week, which I'm still uh, kind of processing, is that um, the, the king of social media, uh, Facebook, has apparently changed its name or is contemplating changing its name to Meta, like for metadata, M-E-T-A. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and then of course, Congress is interested, everybody's interested about you know, how they affect public opinion um, and, the, and the algorithms they use to elevate, quote, engagement on top. And, and, and engagement means raw meat kind of information that gets people excited, you know, divides them, and undermines, for example, the integrity of a given community by having everybody mad at each other. So my question is, you know, is that, is that something we should be concerned about? Because it's another kind of, it's mental hacking, it's social hacking, it's hacking the, 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 social, the society, if you will, and it can have a terrible effect, um, but you, you, it runs headlong into the First Amendment. And so, you know, uh, Amy Klobuchar is uh, serving as a chair of the, I don't know, I don't know what committee, some committee in the, in the, um, the Senate, um, just trying to figure out what to do. So I'm, I'm wondering where this whole thing about social media fits, because obviously social media is here to stay. Uh, 3.7 billion people in the world use Facebook. That means it's very influential. It wants to be negative. That has a huge effect. So where, do, where is it going? What do you think about that? Where does that play you know, alongside or in comparison to uh, what you're doing with cyber? Yeah, so... Uh... And then that is a very complex thing that is going on with that for sure. Um, and I am by no means qualified to speak on a legal front on, on how Facebook is uh, using posts and all that stuff. But it is, it's a real thing that you're talking about. I mean, uh, I, 
me personally, how we can combat it is almost too simple to say that it's common sense. You have to look at every piece of information that you take in and then validate it, right? Uh, if I read a headline that says X person is doing something nefarious and I just believe that, then, well, of course, I'm going to be swayed against that person. And if I'm doing fact checking, well, that's not going to help. Help me be open to what the reality is. Um, so from our perspective at our, at our job, though, um, you know, that's not in our realm of, of work, right? That's, uh, that's an internal uh, political piece that within the nation. So we're not, we will never be defending against First Amendment rights uh, of the citizens or corporations. That is, that's way outside the realm of. You know, okay, I just mentioned it for the comparative value of it. Yeah. Uh, we're almost out of time, Frida. And I, I want to ask you to, um, you know, to give us your thoughts, your message, if you will, to the community about what you do, about what's coming down the pike these days, about what they should be thinking about. Uh, can you give me a minute or two on your, your message to the community? Sure, Jay. So our message to the community as cybersecurity professionals is to number one, to Pete's point, the information that you digest educate yourselves on misinformation, social media usage, what your children are looking at, and those are personal choices. But the most important thing is called cyber hygiene. And to take a look at your cyber footprint, what is a cyber footprint, Jay? Well, that's just how much of yourself you're putting out in the cyber world. To each person, that means something different. If you are a LinkedIn user, if you are a social media, Instagram, Facebook user, if you are even Pinterest, I love to pick out patterns and do different things, but all this data is collected and correlated under your identity. That awareness and understanding how to safeguard your passwords, your social media, and the cross-population of your workplace, your school place, and your home place creates a big threat pattern. So we just want to bring awareness. Again, we, we reference the CISA.gov. Uh, page it has it has K through 12 uh, resources for teachers and educators and even parents uh, as well as adults. It has another section that teaches you how to protect yourself against malware, how to gauge those emails that you're getting. What we want more than ever is for people to be cyber smart because we feel that there's a deficiency there. People want to use applications; they don't read and understand what implications come with them downloading that app. Also, we want to bring awareness to the career force. I would love for every young person who is somewhat moved by me and Pete to join the Navy because as a Navy retiree, I love the Navy and like him, I partner with how much the camaraderie, the lifestyle, serving your country, but also the training. And also it's a great profession. But if that's not for you, higher education, do your homework, study, <laughs> take these things serious because I mean, empty bank account, you could be a victim. Be cyber smart. Yeah. Join the Navy and see the world electronically. <laughs> so, Peter, what would you add to that? And can I ask you to fold one other point in? You know, I guess you guys know there there are some Luddites out there that 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 have a phobia about computers in general. And when we have a conversation like this, they say, I don't want to hear about it. I don't deal with yeah. computers. I am completely a Luddite. What would you say to them too? Yeah, I mean, computers and technology is, you know, it's not something to be feared. It is something to be respected for sure and to be aware of and understand it. Um, but, you know, look at what it's doing to us right now. Uh, you know, Rita's on the other side of the island, Jay, uh, uh, you're on one side, we're just chatting away here, uh, all through the power of technology. And it's only going to get more robust and it's only going to help out more. So I think the more we can use it to our advantage, is better and it, it definitely does and, you know we're talking solely from cyber defense and technology in that sense but it goes across the board whether it's, you know cancer research you know, all that stuff all the medical you know, technology is not something to be feared but it uh, you know i think what you're getting at jay you know people think of the terminator and you know skynet taking over <laughs> and stuff like that um, but, but it all gets back to what we were talking about in the beginning. It all comes back to a 
you know, a hand on a button, making bad decisions or making proper decisions. Uh, you know, I think the, the end point I would put for all the cybersecurity pieces is you you have to have uh, that gut feeling, right? So you got to you got to understand if, if it doesn't feel right, step away from the keyboard. You know, there's nothing's going to get hurt if you just take your hands and raise them above your head and not hit enter. And then get a second. Common sense prevails quite often. Uh, here, here, um, yeah. Peter Benson, uh, Frieda Clanton. Thank you so much, you guys, for talking to us. It's a great conversation, and um, I, I'll be down. I'll be down to Cam Smith to sign up in the morning. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Aloha. Aloha.